One of the things we get asked quite a bit is uh, in regards to seam lines, creases, pleats, folds in clothing, things that give the cloth more realism. And there are a couple of ways inside of cloth and cloth effects to do this. Uh, one of which really is is not used as much as it probably could be. It's a little tougher to set up and you have to be willing to kind of futz with some spline uh, technology a little bit, but by and large it does get the job done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you both ways that you can do it. So I'm going to go to my splines and in fact let's bring up this viewport and I'm going to create a couple of cloth panels I'm going to scale that one down and make a copy there. And now what I'm going to do is convert to an editable spline and choose attach. So that I've got those there. And in fact, let's actually make this dark blue so it stands out and I'll turn the grid off so it's fairly easy to see. And next what I'm going to do is let's go into vertex sub object mode and I'm going to turn all these into corners and I'm going to break them all. So that everything is broken. And I'm going to call this standard seams pattern. Standard seams. And I'm going to make a clone of it. I'm going to call it internal seams. So at this point we've basically got two and in fact let's change the color of this a little bit so that they're able to be differentiated from one another. Now the standard way of working with garment makers to throw it on different panels, go into seam sub object mode, create a seam, create a seam, and adjust your crease angles right here. Now that's perfectly acceptable if you're doing a, a skirt or something that's got lots and lots of pleats and creases in it you're going to be building a lot a lot of little triangles that are I should say rectangles that you're going to need to to create your garment and that's that's acceptable. Another way to do it though is to create internal seam lines for a piece of clothing. So in this case Let's go into spline subobject mode and I am going to delete edges. And then what I'm going to do is select the remaining edges and I'm going to push it together as if the cloth had been pulled together through cloth effects where these panels are being yanked together. But in this case I'm only going to have a single piece of clothing. Now, if I try and put cloth effects on this right now, I'm going to get an error. It's gonna basically going to tell me that the boundary splines do not form a closed loop, and that's that's not a good thing. I need to do some, some tweaking here. I also have some problems in that. Um, let's go in here first, and I'm going to burn these for the moment. And I'm going to go into vertex sub-object mode, and I'm going to weld everything back together. So I've got a single well, what should be a single, I see I have two first vertices, I actually have three first vertices, so these things weren't quite overlapping. Let's bring it up to something like weld, there we go. And then let's set this as our first. Okay, so make all the verts corners again. When I throw Garment Maker on here, you'll see I get the correct pattern, and actually if you looked really closely you'd notice that where vertices existed I had an insertion point other than these corners because they're not broken so it, it's looking at this corner to keep it flush all of these it tends to kind of round off instead of keeping these nice crisp edges so now that I've got that what I want to do is break pretty much all of these vertices back off again I want to break that one again. So I have one one left. Let's go into spline sub object mode 
And I'm going to recreate these lines. I'm going to snap. Right clicking to end the mode. Again, now that I've got these patterns, I throw here we go. This is the, the error that I expected. More than two splines meet at a point. And this is what you'd get if you had internal seam lines. Because what Garment Maker is trying to do is find the boundary of the panel, like it did up here. Um, unfortunately, it's got these T-joints that are being created here and here and here and here. And it doesn't know where the cloth ends. So it's got a problem. It doesn't know how to to put the Delaunay mesh together in here yet. And basically what you need to do is go back down into Editable Spline and in Segment Subobject Mode you select the uh, internal seam lines, which you want to be internal seam lines, and then all the way at the bottom you've got these material sets. I'm going to set them to two. You know, By default all of these are all set to one internal seam lines get a set ID of 2 so that it knows this isn't the boundary of my cloth this is just a seam line and here comes some of the the fighting that we get to do with with garment maker now and that it's telling me that the splines are forming overlapping loops which means I've probably got um, either a a um, an area that has just some curvature. Let's actually redo this again. I'm going to select those two and delete them. Let's grab this vertex and break it. And then in segment subobject mode, let's create a line. I'm going to snap again. So I'm basically rebuilding these yet again. Whoops, stay in subobject mode, surface properties, ID2. Let's see if that solved it. There we go. So basically, I had forgotten to break one. Now, if you look at this mesh, you'll notice I have perfectly straight lines where those seams are for this piece of cloth. It's a single garment, it's a single piece of fabric that I'm working with instead of three individual panels. Now I'm working with one one panel and when I put cloth effects on top of it 